My name is Steve Smith and this is DQA Weekly and this week we're going to be talking about the price of upgrading your computer with Blu-ray and we're specifically talking about computer towers because I seriously don't like those Blu-ray players that connect by USB. Not worth your money. So let's talk about the price of upgrading your computer tower with Blu-ray drives with the ability to actually play back Blu-ray movies because that's not necessarily the same thing. So first of all, Blu-ray drives do not have an IDE version. You need SATA. If you don't got SATA, forget about it. Then you won't be able to get anything out of this. If you already have a DVD drive though, you can't, that's connected by SATA, even though you don't have an available SATA port, you can just replace that drive and get the SATA. So not everything is necessarily lost. It just requires SATA to be connected. And of course, your computer will have to have at least met the following specifications. So dual or quad core processor, I suggest quad, but it's your choice. The appropriate optical drive, which is 65 to $115, 65 model will allow you to watch Blu-ray and burn DVDs, while the 90, 95, $115 models will allow you to have better speeds at reading the uh, Blu-ray drives, as well as being able to write to the Blu-ray drives. And anything that has any special requirements will be more than that. But to be able to watch them, it's $65 minimum. Then you need a graphics card that has at least 256 megs of video RAM. When you go to a computer store these days, it's $45 for a gig of VRAM. So if you don't meet that spec, it's not that expensive to upgrade. Then you need Windows XP Service Pack 2 or better. The majority of you should be running Windows 7 or 8 by now, which means that their one gig of system RAM won't necessarily be correct anymore. I would suggest four to eight gigs of system RAM. Obviously, if you have a modern graphics card, it should be high definition content protected compliant, so HDCP, but your liquid crystal display monitor or plasma, so LCD or plasma monitors also need to be HDCP compliant and they have to be connected from the graphics card to the monitor via DVI cable, HDMI, or by DisplayPort, HDMI and DisplayPort being the only two technologies that will support sound over the cable. So unless you have a sound system for your computer, we're going to be telling you to connect by a DisplayPort or HDMI if you want sound in your computer screen. After this, of course, you should theoretically be able to play your Blu-ray discs. There's no actual guarantee here. So the next step is to actually go down to the website, Cyberlink. The, it will be actually in the show notes. So tqaweekly.com slash SE5EP35 and download a trial of the Cyberlink PowerDVD Ultra software. And the reason why I'm gonna tell you to buy the, uh, to try it out is because you're not necessarily guaranteed to be able to play Blu-rays, even if you meet all this minimum specification because of the way Blu-ray works. So you download this just to see if your computer will even run a Blu-ray drive and the Blu-ray movie, of course, in it. And if you can, the price of that software is an extra $100. So if your computer didn't already have a Blu-ray drive, we're talking a minimum $165 upgrade if you met the minimum requirements for your computer. If you have to change the graphics card, then we're talking $210. If your computer needs a full upgrade of the motherboard processor and RAM, we're talking so much more that it's worth buying a PS3 or PS4 at this point. However, if you're not a gamer, you can go as low as $65 for a refurbished Blu-ray player at Walmart. So it will be up to you. Is it worth the upgrade or not? So I want you, if you're on YouTube, to write down below if you think it's worth it. And if you already have, what are your experiences with that specifically. And if you're not on YouTube, you can go to tqwayweekly.com slash SE5EP35 and provided you already have an account there, you can leave your comments down below there. And of course, I may share them in the next episode. So if you thought this was useful, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs it down. Maybe leave a comment down below explaining why you think it's not a useful episode. And of course, 
Don't forget to subscribe to this show. If you want to help me out and make this show better, go to, uh, to patreon.com slash TQA weekly, which will be on my left on this screen. And of course, if you want to see last week's episode, it will be down below right underneath that. And of course, just click on this screen if you're still on YouTube to subscribe to this show. Thank you and have a great day.